The show is made possible in part by its supporting sponsors. Blue Otter Power Group of Companies, Joe's Discount Tire, and AskGuy.ca. People, everybody has a story, you know, and, and sometimes I reach out to people and they're like, oh, I would love to, but why me? And and Karen Kirkendall, nice to see you. Good to see You're you You're an too, example Dave. of what I just said. You're like, <laughs> yeah. well, what, you know, but uh, uh, it turns out we have some mutuals and mm -hmm. um, they told me a little bit and I was like, wow, that's right. And everybody really does have a story. So thank you for inviting me here into your home. I... I, I I say it almost every week. I enjoy coming into people's homes because you never know what you're going to get. And it's mm. like, I see an old classic piano there and a banjo here and photography, which is all a big part of who you are. Yes. Yeah. Let's, uh, uh, where are you from originally? Sarnia. Yeah. I've, yeah. I lived in Sarnia until six and a half years ago when we moved here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've always been a Lambton County girl. Yeah. We're out here in Corona. And um, uh, it's, Corona's a nice, Nice knit community, right? It's beautiful. We've been here, oh, it'll be seven years this summer. Yeah. Um, and in seven years, we've become friends with all of our neighbors. Yeah. Like, if I have an emergency, I could call my neighbor across the street and she'll watch my son for me. Like, we're we're all very yeah, close here. Takes a community, right? It, it sure does. Right. And this is one that actually steps up. Yeah, for sure. And you say we, so your husband, Jeremy. Yep. And, and our son, Isaac. Isaac. And how old is he? He will be 11 in April, but he's going on 18, I would swear, right? with the attitude. But he's, he's Where does a good he get kid. that from? Oh, I have no idea. Mom or dad or both? <laughs> Little of both. Yeah. Little of both. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, growing up uh, in Sarnia, was that, was that good? I loved growing up in Sarnia. I grew up in a small business family. My grandparents owned an appliance store in downtown Sarnia. Yeah. So everybody knew me because I was Epo and Telly's granddaughter. Yeah. Um, and again, same thing, like community. And that's what... They were, uh, they were community oriented. Very community yeah. oriented. My grandfather was on, uh, he sat on city council yeah. and like they were always very involved. Small world. I worked for your grandfather. No right? way. Epo. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. We've talked about that's right. And that's I, right. I cleaned the laundromat after school. Yeah, <laughs> they had so. That's uh, funny. I that was my first job. Yeah, I yeah. cleaned the laundromat when I was getting a little bit older. It's probably yeah. about eleven, twelve. Oh, there you go. I had to <laughs> refill the the detergent like it was like a vending machine. Mm -hmm. and stuff. At uh, Victoria and Davis, I think yep. it was right there. Yeah. That's that's exactly where and it was. They were there for years. They yeah. were there until they retired in ninety three, I want to say. Yeah. yeah. Um, and both my parents worked there, so like it was it was a family business. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great to work for, from what I recall. And uh, I mean, you know, there was the, the business had to get done, and things had to be handled a certain way. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and uh, he was a man of detail. That's yes. for sure. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. Moving forward into that, um, like, um, talk about your dad. I know you lost him. And uh, yes. uh, there's a lot of mental health and stuff attached there. So Yes. So I was 25 when I lost my dad, mm -hmm. um, which is actually a very large tie in to why photography is so important to me. Mm -hmm. um, my dad took his own life, mm -hmm. which, um, of course, is... A beyond tragic way to lose somebody yeah, absolutely um and a never-ending struggle but um one of the things that we discovered because of course when you lose somebody any any way you lose somebody yeah. you immediately go to pictures mm -hmm. you go back and you start looking through old memories. albums because you that's what you have now mm -hmm. you have your memories you have your photos and you really really cling to those so when I went and started looking through old photos of my dad, um, I discovered that the last photo I had of the two of us together was my high school graduation. Mm. So I was 17. Where'd you graduate from? Uh, St. Clair. Okay. Yeah. So we went out to Stokes Inland, which still has the same benches in there. <laughs> yeah. And there's a photo of the two of us um, in the bench sitting together at my, after my graduation, going out for celebration dinner. Mm -hmm. And that's the last picture I have of the two of us together. Mm -hmm. And so when he passed eight years later, yeah. that really hit me. That, sure. that how important capturing those memories is. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of 
a place that sparked that, that kind of feeling in me that I wanted to be able to do that for other people. Pres preservation of, of, kind of a preservation of life in a way. Yes, because yeah. um, unfortunately, once you get, when you start to lose family members, then those are the things you want to hold on to. Mm -hmm. um, so photography became not just something to make money at, it became something for me that I wanted to help people capture those memories. Yeah. So that's kind of where my initial start was. I also, I, I always loved photography. Um, actually, I got a camera for my grade eight graduation. Mm -hmm. That was the first camera I ever had. Um, but it has been just something I've always kind of enjoyed just for me. Mm -hmm. And probably about 10 or 11 years ago, um, I decided that's when I wanted to start taking other people's pictures. Right. And it was just sort of a side hustle. And I just wanted to get out and I just had this desire to capture special moments. And then people, of course, the more people find out that's what you do, they're like, oh, we would love for you to come out and take some pictures for us. Right. Um, and I've always been a very outgoing person and I yes. find that helps a lot with people because I can make people feel really comfortable behind the camera. Yeah, because not, like, like, like I go through it with, with this, you know, mm. not everybody wants to get in front of the camera. Yeah. I, in fact, most don't. Don't. <laughs> so there's something to be said for making people feel comfortable in that situation. Yes. Well, and because I was an early childhood educator for 20 years, I have vast experience with children which is a big one trying to get in front of the camera and actually have those genuine smiles yeah, yeah. because a lot of the time it's a very forced smile with kids because mm -hmm. you're just like okay smile right. so uh, i can even tell you of times that um i because of my my history with ece i sing to children oh yeah during sessions i will play games with them i do the ring around the rosies and we do <laughs> the sleeping bunnies and yeah, yeah. all of it so i like that part of my life never ended mm -hmm. when i left ece and i went into photography it just it's like it's like so like your dad passing and then ece uh, it's like everything has come full circle to leave you to where you are now. Can, yes. Can you talk? And, and thanks for sharing that because I know that's, that's obviously very personal. So I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's part of who I am now. Right, right. And mental health then yes. was looked at much differently than now. A s Still a long way to go. For sure. But, right. But especially for uh, men. Yes. It is a huge conversation that needs to be had mm -hmm. because unfortunately, like, of course, because I was his daughter, it was different. He, he didn't want to talk to me about those things, but he didn't feel like he had anywhere, anyone else to talk to either mm -hmm. because it was, it was quite a, a long journey. Mm -hmm. um, and I know he had friends and his sisters that he would have some talk with but it's very hush hush for men and and actually when i worked there he was there and I, that's how i knew him and um i mean i was a teenager so obviously i'm thinking about different things but mm -hmm. never would have would have uh, thought something was was happening there right no and and my parents went through kind of a messy divorce mm -hmm. and a, a long stretch of time that was very difficult. That's actually when my, my parents split when I was 19. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was for the best. They were not happy together, but um, my dad was kind of by himself at that point. And I, I, that's when I started spending a lot of time with him. Yeah. Um, and when <clears throat> we became really, really close. Um, but again, as a father yourself, you know, you protect your children. You don't... As best you can. Yes. Yeah, for sure. So my father's mental struggles that he had was not something he was going to discuss with his kids. Mm -hmm. and well, it's, it's, I think it would... Uh, it's starting to change. It, 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 we think of it, well, it shows that I'm weak. Exactly. Right. And I think that's, that's something we are, we are starting to change because I myself have had... Um, I've gone through a lot of problems with my own mental health. Um, but I now, um, and I'm, I, I'm always happy to talk to people about it because I, I again, feel that it needs to be talked about. Yeah. 
Um, I have a wonderful therapist <laughs> who yeah. I see very regularly. Yeah. Um, I, I do take medication for my anxiety and my depression um, because that's what helps. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's no one, there's no one path to an answer. Of, of no. Deal. Everybody's dealing with well, it differently. Right? I have high blood pressure too. I wouldn't, I wouldn't right. feel bad about taking my blood pressure medication. No, no. So <laughs> no, that's right. it's, I look at it the exact same way. It's something that's helping me. It's helping me to overcome that. And I do, even though our son is 10, almost 11, um, he does know that mom sees a therapist. He does yeah. know that mom has struggles and he's, he has understanding at the level that he's at. Right. It's not something we hide from him. And I think that's, that's a lot of because of my dad yeah. that I I don't want to hide that from him. Yeah. I of course there's certain parts of it that we don't talk about sure. with him. He's too young for that. Not but, yet. But that's, that's always a level. conversation he yeah. does feel comfortable having though. Yeah. If he's having thoughts about anything, I'm sure that's something he would talk to us about. I can relate. My mother went through a whole like you know, and I was like. This was back like in the 70s and a bit of the 80s, right? You know, and definitely things were different then. Yes. Um, didn't talk about it with your friends, that sort of thing. So um, it's nice to see we're making progress, mm -hmm. but still a long way to go, I, I think, you know. So um, great that you're, you're you know, you're, you're, you're doing what you can to, to deal with it. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and yet still live a wonderful life that uh, yes. you, you, you're having here. Um, let's shift gears a little bit now. And thanks again yeah. for that because it, it is an important conversation. Absolutely. Um, so let's shift over to the ECE side of things. We talked a little bit before we started the camera here. And uh, I just can't imagine, like kudos to you or anyone <laughs> who is dealing with, uh, or teachers mm -hmm. or anybody who's dealing with, any Multiple branch of education personalities <laughs> in a room right uh -huh. oh my goodness um how did how did you get into doing that initially okay so honest truth is when i was 17 and i was graduating high school i my mom and i had a conversation and the whole what do you want to be when you grow up Right. The thing that we always talk about. What do you want to be? Well, and, it, and we are in, we've gotten to the place where I'm now graduating high school, and I got to figure it out. Right. Um, the only answer I could ever come up with is I wanted to be a mom. Yeah. So my mom and I sat down, and we actually looked through the like the catalog they used to send out yeah, of all right. the different courses because yeah. no internet back then. Right. Um, and we came across the ECE program at Lambton, and it is one of the best in Canada that's offered. Yep. Um, and I decided, you know what, that that sounds like something I would do. That yeah. sounds like something I would be interested in. And realistically, you're you're mothering little people. Right. Right. So I thought, all right, let's give this a go. And I did the the two year program at Lambton, and I graduated with honors. Awesome. Um, and I branched out into I did home care I was uh, a nanny for a year for oh. two little boys um, and then there was kind of a dry spell where it was difficult to find work in the field because um, unfortunately when it comes to daycare they can hire non-ECEs mm -hmm. to ECEs Right. so there wasn't always available work for those of us who were already ECEs because of course they can pay a little less to people who aren't right. qualified yeah so that doesn't that, let's pause there for just a moment yes that doesn't seem fair like, it, it isn't fair like well if I can do, and this is the uh um dare I say mm. the over glorified babysitter which mm -hmm. is not it's not how I feel about it but that's no. kind of how community looked at it that's exactly how it kind of gets reflected I feel mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. then it's it's for those that aren't qualified, for those who haven't done two years of learning how to care for a child and how to be able to support children through learning, mm -hmm. it they are glorified babysitters to a certain extent for those who aren't qualified. Right, right, yeah. So, but I mean, as an ECE, like you're not just, uh, like, you know, you, you, you're not just looking after my kids while the wife and I go out to the movies for a couple of hours. No. Which then the babysitter kind of puts their own upbringing mm -hmm. into how they will handle your child. 
and hopefully that but there's so much more going on psychologically oh, yeah. and everything else and that well we take we take psychology yeah. we take sociology it's all a part of the program because that's a huge importance yeah. you're not just supporting the child through the day the way you would say if you were a babysitter you're just trying to make sure that kid gets fed and gets gets alive by the time parents get right. home go to bed yeah. no this is a <laughs> when those kids enter your room your space you are educating them you are supporting them you are helping them learn through yeah. their everyday activities uh there's just so much more to it yeah so and you did this for how long 20 years yeah Wow. So, and I did a lot of different branches of it. So I did home care that the first year out and honest to goodness, best family. I loved those kids. Yeah. Um, the youngest is actually a pipe fitter for Jeremy now. I was going to say that. Oh, <laughs> those, is that right? Those kids are, yeah. So um, they're, they're still in your life? In, uh, a in, little in, bit. Like you're, you're, you're well, able to communicate kind of thing? The younger of the two is. Unfortunately, the older of the two passed away when he was 12. Oh, man. Um, that's a, a whole other story. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, but we, I, I did that job. I also ran a preschool. Oh. So I did that for three years out of St. Philip's School, or not St. Philip's, sorry, St. Paul's in Sarnia. Okay. On Divine. Yep. Um, and I, I did a program there for three years. So not only did I support those children all day long, I also did all the cleaning. I did all the planning. I did all the maintenance. I did all of it. You so were a mom. I, and, and then some. Right. And then I worked for Generations Daycare at the same time. So I ran preschool in the morning. And then I drove out to do daycare in the afternoon. Because unfortunately, one job is not enough in that field. Well, yeah, there's another. That's the financial side to it all. Like you're yes. really not being paid enough for what is no. needing to be accomplished. <laughs> yeah. For, for somebody who is a, who is not only gone through school for two years mm -hmm. but also you are leaving your children with like literally your most precious part of your life yep. and and not just one yeah. it's not like we're just getting one kid in there we're probably if you are in with infants you have three mm -hmm. if you're in with toddlers it's a ratio of one to five mm -hmm. if you are in with preschools it's one to eight and if as an ece uh how many um uh, I don't want to say students, but how many children can are you allowed? Is there a number limit you're allowed to handle? Or yes, so depending on the age of the children. Right, that's what you're saying. Okay. So yeah, so t babies, which is up to eighteen months, right, um, is one to three. So oh, one I adult okay. to three yeah, kids. You were saying that. Okay, I missed. And then saying. toddlers is one to five. Right. Gotcha. Preschool is one to eight, and yeah. then school age is one to fifteen. Okay. So I can now have I by myself. They would put me in a room with 15 four-year-olds. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> so, yeah, so being underappreciated and yeah. undervalued yeah. is a big thing. And is that, uh, without going down this rabbit hole, mm. is that the government? I believe so. Yeah. There's, there's, yes, because when I did the preschool, I was working for a private firm and right. I made much better money than I did through the public daycares. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's, because also they, there's only so much they can do the mm -hmm. daycares themselves. Right. Um, and I, and I have friends who I met working in those daycares who still work in the daycares, but you need to have a passion for that to do that for oh, so yeah. many years. Yeah. Because you're not just dealing with the children as well. At some point there's interaction with, mom and dad yes and i would say typically now mom and dad aren't together a lot of the time there's a lot more separation so then there's two different uh, i mean even when people are married and together there's different opinions on how to raise the children because absolutely you were raised one way i was raised another absolutely uh, we fight about that and now now when we're not together well now i can do whatever i want you can't tell me what to do mm -hmm. and then there's all of that so how how does that come into play that well to manage <laughs> that's what's tricky. worse the children or the mom and dad <laughs> usually mom and dad <laughs> yeah. because to be honest when it comes to kids when i was teaching because i taught kindergarten with the school board for 11 years yeah and when i taught i had those kids we had rules in yeah. our space and regardless of what mom and dad's rules are 
this is how we're going to do things here. So mm -hmm. a lot of kids, though, they don't they don't want to be in charge. And so much of the time, parents are asking them, well, what do you want? They don't need that at that age. They need right. you to give them the rules right. because they're small. So as soon as they come into school, they actually thrive because in school, they have to follow a certain set of rules that are already there. Well, now I don't have to make the rules. Right. So there's, I don't know, there's, a, there's always parent input. <laughs> there's always that one parent who decides that they don't like how you're doing something. Mm -hmm. But I've always been a very big open door when it came to education because, again, like I said, they're your children. Yep. I want to have a good relationship with you mm -hmm. because you need to trust me. I would think so. Because I'm going to spend the next six or eight hours with yeah. your kids. You, you probably spend them a, more time in a day with a child than a parent does who's working. Often, yes. Because, you know, by the time you get home and then they make supper and then they're into bed, like there's a few hours oh, yeah. in a day, right? There's not a lot of time. Yeah. So it's that's something that I found was actually a big dropout when it came to um, going when I went into the school board. Because in daycare, I did. I had personal conversations with every parent every day. Yeah. I had something to talk about with their kids every day. Mm -hmm. When I got into the school board, I, I was paired with a teacher. And on that first day where the kids were getting picked up, she's like, I was like, but I didn't even get, I didn't talk to that family. I didn't talk to that family. She's like, that's not what we do here. That's not mm -hmm. how it's done. And I'm like, but how are they supposed to trust me? Yeah. Because that to me is such an important even, piece. You know, if there's pieces that you need to share with mm -hmm. what happened with that child that day. So then I had to learn how to pick and choose. Pick and choose which families mm -hmm. needed to be talked to. Pick and choose. Now, I will say having social media has become a huge blessing in that way. Right. Because we had something. It was, I always told parents, it's like your own personal Facebook for your kids. And it was mm -hmm. called, we used a program called Seesaw. Oh, okay. And so parents could, they had a login for their kid. We would post pictures. So like you would actually get a peek into your kid's day. That was oh, nice. lovely. Yeah. And then you could talk back and forth through Messenger or they could comment on things if they wanted. Um, and I found that was, that helps a lot because that parent piece is such an important piece in education. And it's just not always possible. Yeah. Educators are run so thin they have so little time and so many kids. And like you said, there's there's a lot more broken families. There's a lot more single parent families. Yeah. And because of that, there is, there's just more social and, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, emotional support yeah. that you're doing with kids than it used to be. Yeah. And I find... Bullying online and all that. Like, oh, too, bullying. And it, absolutely. It, like there's. changed. Well, There's right. so much that's changed because of social media and because of the lovely COVID we had. Right. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. Uh -huh. I thought, you know, the longest two weeks of our life. It was uh, just uh, two weeks. I know. Right? I still remember that. <laughs> Jeremy was out of the country. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, it was it was quite something um, teaching. So, so from there, wow, there's a lot yeah. uh, going on there. I just sort of... No, that's great. Mm -hmm. sure. I think it's a, it's another... Uh, we could probably do a docu-series yes. on, on EC. Maybe we oh, will. There we go. Um, but let's shift gears now to where... How did this... Was it the ECE side? Like you just had enough of so many things? Or like, like what was it that made you go, okay, this photography thing is not a side hustle anymore. Going full-time. We well, went to school mm -hmm. for that. And uh, so how long ago was that that you went and took that at the college? So the summer of 2021, yep. right um, after doing COVID, after, oh my goodness, it was just, I had a very difficult time um, working. I had no support. I was feeling very underappreciated in my job and I was taking on far too much and I became extremely overwhelmed and I ended up having, without going into too much detail, I ended up having a fairly severe mental breakdown. Mm. That's That was kind of where I landed and um, if it wasn't for Jeremy, if it wasn't for my husband, I don't, I don't know how I would still right. be here. He, he said, you know, it's, it's time for change then. If this is going to cause you this much 
mental health issues because it, it being in that role, it wasn't, it wasn't the kids, it wasn't the parents, but it's adults, the other adults. Yeah. And without breaking any rules with the school board, uh, needless to say, I just, I was very underappreciated, undersupported. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Um, but Jeremy kind of looked at me and he said, then you're done. Right. And, I agree. and he was it's toxic. You shouldn't be there. No, he was instrumental in my ability to actually, if it wasn't for him, I couldn't have walked away from my job. Right. Like I, I'd been there yeah, for 11 years. There's still bills to be paid and all that exactly. stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So he supported me through that, and then we decided together that to take photography to the next level, I wanted to go back to school. I did not want, uh, I, I had basic understanding, and after being in the program at Lambton, I think I was there for like maybe three months, and unfortunately, again, our first semester was online. Yeah, yeah. Um, but by the time we got two or three months into it, I had already surpassed everything I knew. Yeah. So everything that I learned in the program was just incredible. Yeah. And Richard Beland. Oh, my gosh. Such like, a wonderful guy. So amazing at Lambton College. <laughs> if you think you want to. This is where I get the advertisement. Yes. <laughs> get, get, just do it. Just take yes. it. Right? Because you learned so much, including how to fly a drone. You even yes. got that part of it, right? I have a drone license. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Which is, I thought that was so cool. I, I actually had to go through, like, the pilots. Yeah. Yeah. It was so awesome. So, Yeah. They set you up for absolutely everything you need to and know. He is the best of the best, as far as I'm concerned. Oh my gosh, so why his work is incredible. For a teacher? I know, right? Like, look him up. Yeah, Richard Bland for sure. Richard Bland. They've actually uh, featured him. The ISO and Sarnia's featured yes. him before, and he did a gala there. He did. That's I, right. I came. I was supporting his gala as part of what I did with the program. Nice. I actually have. I still have it, Richard. If you watch this, he gave me a, a photograph of Gord Downey from the oh. Charlie Hip. And said, use that for a fundraiser gift sometime. I still have it. And, Gotta uh, use it. Um, uh, he's a very generous man as Yes, well. he is. Super talented. So you took the course there at Lampton College. I did. And that's what, a two-year It is a two-year yeah. program. Um, it is amazing because they start with the theory and they teach you, they make sure you understand everything about your camera. Yeah. So it's not like you are, you don't have to know a thing about if you have an interest in photography, right. they will take you right from Start the from studs right. and build up with you. Nice. So we we did all kind of the theory part of it. We do, And you get a Photoshop course. Mm -hmm. So you learn everything about how to use Photoshop, how to do... So not just taking the pictures, not right. just the lighting for the pictures, but the editing of the pictures. Also posing. Like right. they, they literally will take you through every step. You learn building photography. You learn um, all the different like specialty la things. Landscape photography, that kind of landscape stuff photography. Yeah. Like this, this is stop motion. Yeah. Oh so wow. So that's, that's water. That is so cool. Uh, we'll get a close-up shot of this so everybody can see it. But so yeah, yeah there is the one over there with the three cameras. Oh yeah. Uh, there are seventeen separate photos. So they like <laughs> wow. there's you learn absolutely you learn a lot. It's it's yeah. amazing how much you learn. Worth um, every penny. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. because the the back part is is like they, if now if I were to to message Richard or Jeff or Nikki or any of the teachers I had and said, hey, I have a question. Sure, absolutely. Still connected there. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So like it's it's not like it's when you're done you're out. You yeah. can you can still be in touch with them if you have questions. That's um. So yeah, absolutely every part of it. And there's a videography. Class. Yes, so we take well, that yeah. with uh, Corey Leckie. Oh, Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, okay. He, I didn't know he's that. the owner of Frameworks Media. Oh, okay. Cool. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So he, yeah, he's well experienced. Oh, all the very teachers well. there. I know I was bragging about Richard, but everybody there are very, very qualified. Well, and that's the thing. That was one of the biggest reasons I wanted to go to Lambton, other than the fact that I live in this community, right. is because every single teacher there is a professional in their field yeah and they so, you know I, I know most of them I, they, they genuinely care yes. about their students it's not absolutely like I'm just here to do a job and then move on oh gosh no yeah no and they uh, a lot of them make their living through that as well right so well and they all are in photography so you'll yeah. still catch richard out doing oh, shows yeah. and yeah. you'll still see jeff on the sidelines of sports yeah. and 
like Nikki is a wedding photographer. Oh, so like, okay. and they bring all of that to the classroom. Yeah. So you get to learn from professionals yeah. who are currently actually doing it. Yeah. Yes. So what what category do you put? Do you, do you like? Are you the wedding photographer? The landscape? Like, are you a little bit of everything? Or? I feel like right now I'm still trying to find yeah, yeah, my my niche place. Um, so I've kind of getting my feet wet in a few different areas. Yeah. So I, I do wedding photography. Yeah. Um, I second shoot with a couple other wedding photographers that are amazing. Mm -hmm. um, because again, learning from each other. Right. Um, I do family photography. Oh, yeah. I, I love product photography. I actually work with, have you heard of the Great Pretenders? Yes. The, yes. the clothing. Yeah, that's I, right. I just did a catalog shoot with them. Oh, wow. Nice. So, yeah, I, I do a little bit of everything. And, yeah, I love every minute of it. Cool. And she takes photos of cool cars. Yes, I do. I've ar I'm already going to be doing that again this you year. You are, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. For the street cruisers. That's yep. how we... We hadn't seen each other. We... Her and Jeremy have known a lot. Karaoke. It always seems to come back to karaoke. <laughs> karaoke or pool? <laughs> and pool. Yes, That's pool right. right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then you know that we sort of reconnected there. Was it last summer or summer before when you did the? Uh, yes, last summer. And I was and like, oh, hi, how are you? I I've, hadn't seen Jeremy in a long time either. And no, Rick just reached out to me, and yeah. I'm going to be doing that again. That's this awesome. summer, so you did a great job. I still have the photo that you <laughs> took, right? I absolutely. I just, I love classic cars. That's actually something I used to do with my dad. I used to go to all the car shows when I was oh, a kid. Oh, right, yeah. I love classic cars. Yeah. So I'm always excited to do that. I they're actually pretty, classic cars are pretty cool. They're not, very you know, cool. They're very cool. Yeah. They're shiny and yeah. <laughs> um, that's actually one thing too that I found now that I am doing this full time. I have the ability to start giving back now too. Yes. So I volunteer with the um, Special Olympics. Oh, nice. So I do photography. I actually did a shoot with them for a basketball tournament. Okay. And at the end of the day, I looked at Tana, who is the, the yeah. woman who handles it. She's amazing. And I said, Tana, uh, I want to do this for you guys all the time. So I volunteer with them now. Great, great. Um, I volunteer with Humane Society. Oh, boy. You get to take pictures of the cute puppies. I love to take no. pictures of the cute puppies. Jennifer was down there the other day <laughs> looking at cats. I'm like, no, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Fake news. Anyway, yeah, okay. that would be a tough one. Come on, oh. don't you just want to bring all those animals home with you? <laughs> I do, but I also want to help support them so that yeah. way they can grow they can because they're there. looking at building a new location. Yes, they are. So I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm down. So I did their Christmas shoots where oh, there yeah. was the the pets with Santa. Yes. Oh, I saw something about that. Yeah. Best best two days. <laughs> I just got to snuggle dogs. I'm like, excellent. I'm in. Right. So and right. then I actually I do a lot of work with community living out of Wallaceburg. Okay. I don't, I connected with them because when I was in school, that's another thing is people who are looking for photographers, you can send requests through the Lens on Lambton website page, which is like oh. the photography page for Never Lambton College. Okay. Lens so, on Lambton? Lens on Lambton. Okay, we'll put that in the comments. You can, um, you can find photographers that way. So the, it, what it does is it emails Richard and he gets these requests and then he can help connect you with a photographer. Oh, cool. So Didn't know that. they were looking, Community Living was looking for somebody to photograph for a Christmas party they were doing. Yeah. Um, and we connected so well. I've done golf tournaments with them. I've done their um, award ceremonies that they do. And I just love working with them. You can tell that you've found your thing. You know, look at the smile. As soon as I said it, right? That's <laughs> oh, awesome. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, that's, and so the inside of you that mm. was struggling before is feeling a lot better. I'm it is. Sure, it's right? starting you know, to look more like this on the inside yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, yeah. Uh, um, and you're good at it. You I, know, I which, love it. Which is great as well. And um, you're still figuring out. We'll call you the variety photographer right now. For right but, now, so, I do a little I bit of everything. <laughs> yeah. But... Um, uh, I, I, it would be hard to decide which category to put yourself in because you're yeah. you're you're such a people. You like to interact with the people, mm -hmm. and you're doing all of that, no matter which category you decide to, to label yourself. Yeah. Right. So, it, it is it. It's okay to just stay the variety Absolutely. variety photographer, isn't it? Right. Absolutely. I I actually um, yesterday I did a shoot with Jansen uh, Homestead and Highlands okay. Farm. They're out in Wilkesport. They have um, the Highland cows. Oh, okay. 
Um, and we are doing a collaboration with another farm called Kilted Farm. For Easter, we are doing some family photos with baby lambs. Oh, really? Wow. Um, tonight, I'm doing some photos for my, actually, my neighbor across the street, uh, her son's basketball team. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I work with the Silver Stick people at Christmas. Oh, my goodness. So, like, I, <laughs> I you have... You really a, filled your calendar. I, so, this is your... This is Full what I do. I'm like, well, I, I, when I reached out to do the interview, I said, mm -hmm. oh, how about that? And you're like, well, I'm no. already booked. I'll have to. <laughs> and I thought, good for her because you've really broken into a rock star world, if you will, as mm. far as, you know, it's like saying, well, I want to be a musician. You know, like, well, okay, but what's your plan B? This is plan A for you now. This right? is and now plan A. That. Talk about the business side of photography as much as you can on, uh, I don't need pricing or anything, but you you have to, I think you and I had a bit of a conversation uh, when you were taking pictures of the cars and it was like, don't sell yourself short in the yes. beginning. And it was like, well, I've only been doing this a little while. I bet, no, you're still skilled. You took the course. Mm -hmm. Do you, have you worked through that? Do you like, this is, this is my price and... Yes, yeah. it has to be it's because hard, right? it, it's very hard right. because um, the big thing is, is as somebody new um, and you're trying to get people to know you now, because I have worked in the community as an ECE for so long, a lot of people already know right. me, um, but you don't want to undercut the next guy. So we have a ton of wonderful photographers in this area. Yeah. That I know many. I hear it many. all the time. Photographer, photographer. Right? Oh my goodness. If you go on to any of the social pages yep. and somebody's looking for a photographer, give it five seconds and there will be 50 It'll blow of them. up, yep. <laughs> so, um, but I'm very, I'm not against other photographers and I have a good group of other photographers that I know that I'm like, no, you know what? I refer to this one and I refer to this one because... Yeah. Well, like newborn photography is not my thing. Right. Yeah, fair. But I have two girlfriends who are both fantastic newborn right. photographers. So I'm like, here, go talk to this one or go talk to this one. Because that I think is the biggest part that it becomes competitive. Right. Because there is so many choices. But when it comes to photography, I find I need to learn to price so I'm, number one, not undercutting the next guy, but also, n number two, not undercutting myself. Not undervaluing yourself, yeah. Exactly. So I don't, want, I don't want to take from others because I'm not in the market to take from others. I want to sell my business based on the quality of my work, right. and I want people to come to me for that and then ask the price second. Right. Because then the price isn't the big deal for them. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of people are looking based on a price tag. Yeah. I, I went through Which, that all the years when I was a DJ for weddings. Yeah. Same thing. And I'd get a call. I'll never forget. I got a call once. It was like, hey, we called you because we want the best and blah, 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 blah. And then I gave them my price and they were like, oh, well, we thought maybe, you know, could you do it for, and it's like. That's. No, well, so-and-so said, oh, so you didn't call me first. <laughs> And, well, they said they'd do it for half what you're saying. I'm like, would you like me to dial the number for See, you? Like, I, what? You know, and what I say to people now is, would you ever go to your dentist and say I can get it for cheaper? Right. Because you're gonna, you're not gonna do that. Like, no. just because I'm a small business and because I'm doing something that there are multiple people doing it, there's lots of dentists out there too. But you want to come to me for the quality of my work. Yep. I don't want to sell you my work based on the price tag at the end. I want you to look at that price tag and go, totally reasonable because I know your work. Yeah. I've looked at people and said, why did you call me? What was your reason for calling me? Mm -hmm. And just say, well, because we know you. Great. In fact, my, you know, my dad used to say, your friends should be willing to pay you double. <laughs> you know what? You know, like, I think that's a great statement. That is a know, great and I have I have a lot of friends who I've done photography for and because I am the person that I am, I'm always like, oh, I'll cut you a deal. They're like, No, you won't. Yeah, no, you're yeah. and I'm like, okay, that's what makes you I a good never friend. Ask a friend. I never ask a friend for a deal. No. If you offer it to me and I go, Well, you know, you don't have to do that and whatever. Yeah. I might come to you and say, Would you would you donate your services for a prize for yes. something? But uh no, I never do that. No. I'll pay you double. Yeah. Now I, now I, I have to pay your double because <laughs> I'm going to need some photography. Soon. There you go. Yeah. You do a lot of like business, like headshot stuff too. I do. You get into that. Yeah. Um, I actually, I did a branding session for the hair professionals. Oh. 
Um, which, and I find that work is so much fun too, because you get to go in and you get to have fun with a business and, and get behind the scenes shots of what they're mm -hmm. doing in their shops. And then we did some headshots too. I actually have my own equipment. Um, and I've done a few times for, um, cause of course in real estate, there's always somebody needing a headshot. Oh, yeah. Um, and I do a mobile service. So I'm like, I will come to you. I'll bring the, the lights, I'll bring the backdrop and, you go ahead and set get get your hair all done up and your face all ready and, we'll take and care of the rest. we will take care of it awesome and it makes it nice and easy for people because yeah well because people are busy too exactly and, you know, free, really you come to me great yeah so what's your what's your marketing strategy been you know like you say okay well i'm a photographer well okay so why am i coming to karen see and that's this is where I'm struggling. I'm actually working with somebody named Marcus right now. Okay. Uh, his company is called Gladwebs. All right. He's new to the area. All He's right. actually originally from Toronto. Okay. And he is helping me revamp my website. Mm. Because as of right now, I look at my website and I go, this doesn't do a thing for me. Right. This is not selling me as a person in the world of photography mm. at all. Um, a lot of the way, of course, word of mouth is very big. Uh, biggest, and, biggest advertising ever. And because I am such an outgoing person, a lot I, I talk to everybody. Um, but I need to work on that part. So Marcus is being my like go-to guy right now. Yeah, nice. Um, I have a meeting with him on Friday, okay. and we are doing some more revamping. And then I'm hoping that he's going to be able to give me a hand too with my social media because. That's, of course, the way of the world. Yeah. The TikToks and the Facebooks oh, and yeah. the Instagrams. Well, and, and, and that alone in itself, you almost need to hire some, well, in my opinion, you do need to hire somebody mm -hmm. to do that because it's a full, as trust me, part of something I do, yeah. I, and I'm a one man show. Um, it's a full time gig to do that prop because you're on TikTok. Yeah. And then LinkedIn and then Facebook and then, you know, yeah. Instagram and, you're, you do it well, though. You, I always see pop-ups yeah, from yeah, you, yeah. and but that's but that's but that's what my business for yes. me is. Yes, is putting it out there, right? If I had a business like you, or if I was, you know, selling cars, or if, it, if my business isn't social media, um, but because mine is, I can do that full time. Yes, you don't have time for that. I really focus don't. on your skill. Yep, the photography, the videography. And uh, uh, yeah, that's it's great that you recognize how important that is. It's so huge, and I and just... it's more than just making a post. Exactly, yeah. and that's the part like because that and that's another class they give you at the college. Yep, it's a part of the program is that you take a social media course, mm -hmm. and it was very helpful. But I'm still I it's a balancing act, yeah. and the amount of time that it takes to actually do any sort of marketing, the amount of time that it takes to um, edit photos, to do the sessions, like. Yesterday I had to drive out to Wilkesport and then I was there for a couple hours and then I'm driving home and then I'm trying to do some editing. Then I get to nine o'clock and I'm like, well, it's way past bedtime. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I haven't posted a single thing. Yeah, yeah. So then I'm like, okay, so. Because you have to balance that, but you have to balance time with family as well, well and too, right? Sitting here, my office is there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like trying to have my own family life going and then I'm trying really, because it is important to have that balance. Yeah. And that's something that's hard to find the balance for when you work partially out of home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I try when Jeremy gets home from work, shut all the computers down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, it, some nights you just can't. Yeah. So like, I have my own space at home. I have, I have my own room. It's a studio, right? And there's a door and then a sliding door. Mm -hmm. and, and I had to tell... Jennifer and Jason, when that door is closed, yep. the only way you open that door is if the house is on fire. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't interrupt yeah. me. You know, no. me, like, do, you, do you have to divide that space too? Does, does the, yeah. the husband and the son have to recognize that? They need to know. Well, and we have, <laughs> I have the doors. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's all in brand new balancing act because yeah. for 20 years I had somebody else dictating my schedule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is that I will say has probably been my most challenging self discipline the schedule, yeah, because now I'm in charge of all of that myself, yeah, um so the balance, just working through and figuring out what the right balance is, and 
But that's a skill. I, I uh, interviewed somebody the other day and I said, you know, like some people go, oh, you're he's an entrepreneur. She's an entrepreneur. And that's who they are. Um, entrepreneurship is a skill to be learned. Right? Mm-hmm. And that's what you're. You're, you know, you don't, I always say you don't go through things, you grow through things. Yes, absolutely. And that's kind of what you're doing right now. You're like, okay, I got the photography (laughs) thing. I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm still learning that probably. Oh yeah, constantly. But this business thing, man, I don't, sometimes I don't even want to deal with that. I just want to, but that's all a part of. It is. Becoming a self-sustained employee of your, you're, you're your own employee, right? Exactly. Yeah. You should see the meetings. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, ooh, right. A lot of different conversations going on there. Oh, yeah. I, and I imagine, too, that there's conversation with Jeremy, you know, when you're Constantly. stuck. Or, um, you know, just those those intimate conversations on what should I do well, and- or should I be doing this? Does that yes. ever come up? Like, All the time. Like, oh, I- well, and he's such a voice of reason. Yeah. So... Just the other day, I was saying, you know, I would really love to get some new camera equipment. He's like, all right, so here's how we do this. Every time you do a job, you're going to take a quarter of that, a quarter of that pay that you make, mm-hmm. and just put it away. And yep. that'll be for the next piece of equipment. Yep. Where in my head, I'm like, well, if I just do th- these three jobs, we can pay for the new equipment. And he's like, no, 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 because yeah. you're, not, you're not balanced. That's right. So he's very knowledgeable. And that... Uh, that also because he's like, you also still got to pay the bills. That's right. He's so still bills to pay. He's very, he's very knowledgeable. And that is such a blessing because yeah. sometimes I, I just get ahead of myself yeah. Yeah. and he helps he's smart pump the brakes. I, exactly what I, I think. Yeah. 25, 30% yeah. immediately goes back into the business. The other 30% goes uh, to paying the bills yep. and then the rest can be for uh, some fun. Right, and that's uh, yeah. So it's important. Uh, it's a good that you can have those conversations, right? You've got that partner to lean on. So yes. To speak. And then, and then, and then, your son in all of this. <laughs> does he? Uh, d- does Does he think it's cool what mom's doing? He He really does, actually, because he's like, Mom, where are you working today? Right. Because every day is a new day. Every day is somewhere different, and that's I think really exciting for him. He and he loves that I'm doing something I enjoy. Yeah. And he's like, and I don't have to be your model anymore. Right. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're leading. You're setting an example though, too, of, mm. of to him to hey, I can do what I love too. Yes. You know, it doesn't have to be uh, go to school, get good grades, get a job. Nope. Right. So and you... and Isaac is very mechanically inclined. Oh yeah. Okay. He is also very mathematical. Okay. Um, but he has a hard time with the concentration piece. Yeah. Okay. So, but we've we've always been very because Jeremy's in the trades. Yeah. Which is, again, go back to my generation. Yeah. That was not a thing we did. You yep. had to go to college. You had to get yep. a gra- get the education. Yeah. And now I'm like, no, you have to do. Something that you're going to enjoy, but also something that, like, doesn't necessarily have to be at the end of a college education. Right. Or the end of, if you want to, because at one point when he was about six, he decided he wanted to be a scientist, engineer, wrestler. A scientist, engineer, wrestler. Yeah. I should interview your son. You should. (laughs) (laughs) It'd be quite the job. I'm sure. Well, he's like, Mom, because I really love science. But I'm really good at math, so I should do engineering. But wrestling seems like so much fun. <laughs> right. And I'm like, well, you're not wrong. <laughs> so. So he's still, he hasn't decided. He hasn't said, okay, no, I'm going on this. He's still being. He's all over the place. Out. That's okay. Oh, right. which, he's, he's got, got some, lots of time. He's got lots of time there. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. What, uh, I think I know the answer, but what's your favorite part about what you're doing now? My favorite part about it is, uh, actually, I've gotten to go with Isaac on field trips. Oh, right. I have, because I now make my own schedule, mm. I have gotten to do things I would have never had the opportunity to do because I was in the same school system. So I was, as a teacher in the kindergarten program, Yeah, I wasn't off when he was off. Right. So I have the ability to be available for my son and also the volunteer part. I love that I get to do that now too. Yeah. Because I've like I said, I 
grew up in Sarnia. It's been a community that has supported me my whole life, yeah. and now I get to give back. Yeah. And that's such an important piece to me. That's awesome that you get that family time that a lot of people don't because of the... Go yeah. Right yeah. Area. Good for you. So those are my two. <laughs> I've known you a long time. I got to tell you, yeah. I'm really proud of what you're doing. Thank you. And uh, I, I expect even greater things coming down the pipeline. <laughs> they will. Don't you worry. And uh, <laughs> uh, I thank you so much for you shared a lot of uh, uh, personal side that's important for for people to uh, let's keep talking about the mental health. Absolutely. And out there. And I'm sure we'll see you again real oh, soon. Oh, absolutely, Karen, Dave. thank you so much. You're very welcome. And thanks to all of you for watching. As always, be sure to click the like and the love button, but click the share button so we can share Karen's awesome story. But as always, that's all the time I got for you this week. Have a great week and an even better weekend. We'll see you next time right here on the show. Bye for now.